All right, good morning, everybody. Hello. Hey, guys. A special good morning to those of you who are joining us online. Today is a very exciting day for us. It's VBS Sunday. And we had just the most monumental fun this past week. You'll see lots of us in red that were volunteers, lots of us in yellow who enjoyed and participated in uh, this week. And so all of this service is going to give you just a little taste of all the fun that we had. So we're really glad you're here. And let's go ahead and get things started. Would you guys all join me in prayer? Blessed be the God whose greatness is monumental. And blessed be our awesome God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for Vacation Bible School and for the many ways it has helped us form a rock-solid faith for the road ahead. With grateful hearts we pray. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Welcome everyone to our closing program for Monumental. It has been an awesome week of learning, fun, and friendship. Thank you to each and every one of you for allowing your kids to be a part of this special week. I'm Corinne Glasscock, and this year I was the director of VBS. I had many important people who helped me with this incredible program, but I especially want to thank Miriam and Kathleen. There were so many others who made this year so successful. If you look around, you can see all the red shirts, and there were so many more. We had nearly 60 volunteers. We'd like to walk you through a week or through our week here at camp. Before we get started, I have one more person to introduce you to. This is Rachel. Rachel did an amazing job leading our kids at the beginning and end of each evening. Rachel, let's get this program started. So, all of the kids have been learning a bunch of fun songs, but kids, I'm going to need your help to make sure that your parents sing and dance along. Can you guys help me do that? Okay, so everyone stand up and we're going to sing the theme song, Monumental God. Monumental love. <laughs> I mean, he is also monumental, but he also has monumental love.
coming to an end. The sun is setting and we have to say goodbye. It has been a terrific week traveling through Monument Valley and we learned so much about God's greatness. We also got to meet Kathleen Towers. Kathleen Towers has her own survival show, but she didn't actually know how to survive. She was hoping that she could pretend and try to make it through, but it didn't work. It kind of failed miserably. Last time we saw her though, she was telling her producer that she needed help. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Kathleen Towers. It's so great to be back here today. It feels like home. And all of you guys are here too. Yes, we are here too. In fact, I got a call from your producer to help you pack a bag of survival supplies. Yeah, I learned so much this week. I'm actually worried I'm going to forget all of it. Well, I have just the thing to jog your memory. Unless if you think there's anything that you should pack. Um, I think I could use some help. Yeah, I'll go get something. What you got there? I got a lighter and a um, candle. Um, okay. <laughs> Do you want to light it? Fire! Fire! <laughs> Maybe not fire. Fire! Fire! Why would you bring a candle in here? How is that going to help me to remember anything? Because, like you learned on day one, even when we blow it, God sticks with us no matter what. Because God loves you no matter what. Awesome, awesome God! Great. Now, why don't you try to rip this mask and tape hot? Hmm. <laughs> I can't! That's because God's love sticks with you through everything. Because God loves you no matter what. Awesome, awesome God. God! Wow. Okay, now that I have, um, I'm so glad that love, God loves me even when I make mistakes. He is an awesome God. I think I might need a bag to pack. Yeah, if you're getting your stuff, why don't you go get a bag or something? I'll be right back. And God is such an awesome God. In fact, that reminds me of a song that you guys learned. Everyone stand up. And before we start singing the song, I will say that I saw this side was dancing a lot more than this side. So all you kids on this side, can you please make sure that your parents didn't dance along? Thumbs up. Okay, awesome God. in my survival kit, I will never forget that God loves me always, even when I blow it. Now, that brings me to the second thing that we lawn. Let me go get it. I hope I'm ready for this. Rachel makes me do weird things. <laughs> I better stretch out. <laughs> oh, help, help. oh my goodness, okay, I got it. You got it? Oh, oh, oh. no. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. What the? What the heck is going on here? Why would you bring a balloon in here? Well, it's tough if you have everything. Because God sticks with you through everything. Because awesome. God is with you everywhere. Awesome, awesome. God. 
<laughs> well, I'm out of breath. Woo! So, so, so God, God is with us everywhere. Awesome. Okay, you sure are getting me prepared. I'm going to have one of the best survival kits out there. So, I have learned that God loves me no matter what. Awesome God! God is with me everywhere. Awesome God! Our God really is an awesome God. <laughs> but, the desert can be pretty overwhelming sometimes. And especially with all the prickly cacti everywhere, whew, so many animals, and I, I'm scared to say, it feels super overwhelming. Well, I have the perfect fins to remind you that God is in control, that God is in charge. <laughs> a bowling ball? I don't think the desert's going to make a very good bowling alley, Rachel. Well, even though life can sometimes throw a scatter balls, God is in charge. Awesome God! In fact, I have a, why don't you put that in the backpack? And let's sing a song that reminds us that God is always watching over us. Everyone stand up. And I will say, this side was dancing a lot more, but I saw some kids not dancing on this side. in charge. So you never have to worry. Well, there's one other thing that I worry about. What's that? It gets really scary at night, hearing all of the bobcats and coyotes howling all night long. It's terrifying. That does sound pretty scary. But I have something for you. This is fantastic. I'll surely be able to keep the bobcats away. Maybe God will even give me enough strength to protect myself. You are brave and strong. And do you know who else is brave and strong? God is strong. Awesome God. My survival kit is filling up. Ugh, that bowling ball's heavy. I have one final surprise for you before we send you on your way. What is it? What is it? I love surprises. Well, all week long, you've had a really hard time surviving in the desert. Yeah, all those cacti everywhere, they're so pokey. I tell you how many quills I had to pull out. Whew. So, um, it's, 
What, what you got there, Rachel? I have something amazing. I have something surprising. It's not another cactus, is it? It's a cactus! No, not again. Oh, don't worry. This is a pinata because God is surprising. What? <laughs> really? Just, just like the cactus. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see what kind of surpri surprises are inside of this cactus. Well, if my friends and I join me in the parish hall after service, we're going to be able to find out what's in it. That's fantastic. It's been an awesome week learning about God's greatness and God's amazing love. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Kathleen Towers and Rachel. Thank you to our crew leaders, our station leaders, our kitchen staff, our band, our decorating committee, and everyone behind the scenes who all worked so hard to make VBS happen. If everyone wouldn't mind giving everyone a round of applause for all that they did. Of course, thank you to Father Rob, who was always supportive, fun, helpful. I mean, guys, he let us swing a bowling ball at his head. <laughs> I don't think there are many churches where you can say that. Oh, even better, I don't know if I have time for a very, very quick story. Do I have a quick second? Yeah. So when I'm looking up the curriculum and whatever, and I'm looking up this, this VBS Facebook page, and I see them, um, a lot of other churches are like, we're not going to do this bowling ball activity to set it up. It's too much work. You have to set up these ladders and all this other stuff. And then I hear someone tell me, well, we already have the setup for it. And I'm thinking, why does that not surprise me? <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah. There's already an anchor in the wall, and it's already done. You don't need the ladders or anything. We already have the bowling ball that's drilled into it and everything. And all these other churches are like, oh, that's too much work. And I'm thinking, we already have it, because, well, that's Father Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so I am so appreciative of everyone. And I really hope that next year you'll, we'll have a lot of volunteers, we'll have a lot of kids, and we'll make it as great of a year as we did this year. Before we go, I have one last thing to share. Each evening, um, Rachel made a video of the highlights of that night, and I hope that you all saw them posted on Facebook. Um, we do have a final video to share with you, and I want to thank Rachel again. You were indescribable, amazing, fantastic. I have no words for how great you were. <laughs> Desert. And on this week's episode, together we will learn what does a day at VBS look like for you? Um, fun, you would walk in, sit down in your place, have a put your badge on, then after you would be listen to a you hear a prayer from Father Rob, then you would go to dinner, and then after dinner you would hear Kathleen Towers really fun. Then after you would go to your rotations and the best part is where you play with water. Then after that we listen to more music and we dance and, and, and sing. We listen to music and then we eat dinner and then we listen to music again and then we go to stations. What's your favorite station? Everyone! What is your favorite part of VBS? My favorite part of VBS is probably acting with Aurelia. My favorite part of VBS has to probably be the water games. Do you like Imagination Station? You do? Yeah. <laughs> Almost everything. Yeah. Probably helping out with Kid Vid and eating dinner with the volunteers. The water games. Uh, doing activities. Uh, doing the water games as well. 
Imagination Station. again in the vast well it really was a great week and uh <laughs> what oh yeah yeah so we still are looking for this shoe whoever owns this shoe if you know we hear that it is we hear that it's a young woman and that her name is um, Sin, Sin, Cinderella. So if any of you see Cinderella anywhere, please let us know, okay? Because we hear she's looking for her shoe. You look like you might be Cinderella. Here. <laughs> it really was a great week, uh, fantastic week. We said thanks to so many people. Thanks to so many people. To make it happen, uh, but the one person, that, but, but nothing happens really without a leader, without a person with a vision, without a person who organizes, without it. And this year, that person was Corinne. And <laughs> and um, we asked her at the last hour. And of course, she's a school teacher and she taught all year long. And I mean, and so the fact that she said yes, that in itself just touched my heart immeasurably. But man, she just came in and she kicked uh, bottom. And, um, and it, it was just a fantastic, fantastic year. So we want to say thank you to Corinne. This, uh, this keeps getting moved. But, uh, so, so here's a thank you note. Uh, and your gift is not coming till tomorrow. We will get it to you correctly. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, um, our gospel today, and you can stay seated. You can listen to this like a story. It's how it was originally read in the early days. People would just sit back and listen, tell me a story, and they'd tell them a story like this. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then Jesus told them a parable, which is a fancy word for a story. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store all my crops? Then he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and I'll build bigger ones. And there I'll store all my grain and all my goods. And I'll say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared... Whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may your words only be spoken and your words only heard. And we do ask this all for your love's precious sake. Amen. Okay, you guys can sit down if you want to. You don't have to stand up here the whole time. As much as I like having to stand up here. So, I'm going to start off by doing something. You tell me what I'm doing, okay? Running. All right, I'm running, but what am I running on? Running in place, running on a treadmill. All right, so we're sort of making believe. We're sort of doing our own imagination station. So I'm running on the treadmill because if you're on a treadmill, 
you have to keep running, right? Now, if you're on a treadmill and you stop running, what happens? Right? If you're on a treadmill and you stop, it did hurt a little bit, but you know. <laughs> if you stop, it's going to be a first class wipeout. The treadmill's still going, you're not going, boom. So if you're on a treadmill, you gotta keep running. That's why the treadmill has become a metaphor for modern life. And in fact, it's a specific kind of treadmill, which, and it's a fancy word, called the hedonic treadmill, okay? So the hedonic treadmill, fancy word for a specific type of treadmill, um, my tablets are getting smaller. <laughs> so it looks like this. What happens is a person has a certain level of happiness or satisfaction, but they want more because everybody typically wants more. And so they see something up here that they think will make them happier, all right? So what's something that somebody might see that they think will make them happier? Money. money. Okay, so they see more money, all right? More money than they currently have. Everybody always wants to make the same amount of money, right? And how much do they want? Just a little bit more, right? And we can remember that. We can remember that when we made, some of us can remember when we made $10,000 and we thought, man, if I only made $15,000, and if we came to make $15,000, it seemed like a ton. And then the day came where we made $50,000. And oh my goodness, if we could only make $100,000, man, I would, I would be able to retire in a year because I'd have so much money I didn't know what to do with it. Then I make $100,000, and now it's just a little bit more, and a million, and then you, know, you just want to keep making more and more. Now it's a billion, and then it's a billion plus. So, so, so we see some, we just want a little bit more. And this is, like, this is like, you ever seen a hamster running around on a hamster wheel? You know, they just keep running around. So this starts you running on this wheel, on this, on, this, on this treadmill. See a little bit more. Okay, you get this extra money, and for a little while, it actually makes you a little happier. You actually feel a little bit better. But then what's really interesting, and this happens to everybody, because this is part of the way that we're, that we're made, all right? And what happens is that satisfaction, that happiness drops off, and we're right back exactly where we were before. We get this new thing, whatever this new thing might be, and for just a moment, it bumps up our happiness level. For just a moment, we feel a little bit better. But then what happens to every single person, because it's a part of the hard wiring of how we were made, that happiness, that extra contentment, it drops off, and we go right back to where we were. So what do we need to do? We look for the next shiny thing, don't we? We look for the next thing, so even more money, not now just $1, but $2. And we go around, and it just keeps us going around and around and around and around and around, and you can never stop. Because if you stop, you're going to wipe out. And the only way to stop, the only way to stop is to get off the treadmill, is to turn the darn thing off and get off the treadmill. And the second thing happens while this is happening, and it's called the fulfillment curve, and the fulfillment curve goes like this. Because what happens is, when I start off, I start off drive, driving a Corolla. Okay, this is a Corolla. Ah, it's just going to look like that. And then I go up to here, and I get a, oh heck, I get a Corvette. And it's a really fancy car. It's got big exhaust pipes, great big tires, you know, huge tires. Actually, has a whole bunch of exhaust pipes coming out the back. It's got, you know, sexy body work. It's a convertible, no top. And so for a little bit, you know, this makes me happy. But then the Corvette doesn't work, and now I gotta get a Ferrari, and after a Ferrari, I gotta get a jet, and after a jet, I gotta get a yacht. And the thing is, pardon me? Sorry, I don't, my, my hearing doesn't always work really well. Spaceship, oh, a rocket, a SpaceX rocket, is that what we're saying? A Tesla, a Tesla, okay, a Tesla, okay. I'm so behind, I'm so behind in the times. But what happens is every time we keep getting one of these things, it, it, the, again, the, the uptick wears off. And as time goes on, we think something's wrong with me. Because I look at everybody else and I think everybody else is happy. They're not, but that's another, you know, that's another story. And so I keep getting more and more things, but I never get any happier. And so I start to feel like something's fundamentally wrong with me. And then the other thing that happens is despair starts to sit in. 
Because if I couldn't find happiness in this, or in my Tesla, or in my SpaceX rocket, or whatever it may be, then I'm never going to find happiness. Then I'm always going to be miserable. And that's why you can have people who have so much stuff who are some of the unhappiest people of all, because they've started to despair. And over the years, I think one of the most common things that I've heard is that people come in and they say it sometimes, they're deeply ashamed, sometimes they're a little bit embarrassed, but they say, you know, I have, I have the best life ever. I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, I have a great marriage, I'm really happily married, I have a beautiful home, we take fancy trips, I have a nice car. And then they look down and they get really sort of embarrassed, sometimes deeply ashamed, and they say, but, but inside, just know something's missing. Inside, I, I'm just not happy. And they, and they feel terrible about that. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. And that's exactly what Jesus was talking about in today's gospel. Because Jesus was such a bright guy. And so in today's gospel, Jesus is talking about the Hedonic treadmill. He's talking about this guy who, what does he want? He just wants a little bit more. He's got a lot, but what does he want? Just a little bit more. What does he want? He's got, he's got something, but he wants something bigger. And so this keeps him just, this keeps him running on the hedonic treadmill. And God says to him, you fool. Because what he was doing is in doing all this, he's neglecting the one things that really can make people happy. The one thing that really can bring a sense of well-being to life. And that is developing one's soul. That was the guy's big mistake, is he neglected his soul. He neglected his inner life. And you can, you can understand the inner life in a lot of ways, but, 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 it's, but it's lived very differently than that pursuit of things out there is to pay attention to what's going on in here. How do we develop soul? Well, we balance all the things we want to have, because so many people think that what life is about is having. And so if, there, if I'm feeling some lack, I need to have more. And so most people will live their life in that pursuit of having more. But the real secret is in managing what we want. And that's why people who can have infinite amounts of stuff can be so unhappy, where the person who looks like they have nothing at all can be happy as happy can be. Consistently, up to a person, a people who I have known who have gone to third world countries like Haiti. We took a big group of people down to Haiti right after the earthquake. And there were all these people and they had nothing whatsoever. But they were some of the happiest people we ever met. They sang and danced and laughed and, and, and people were struck. They said they're so much happier than the people we know in Northern Virginia. Why? Because they knew life wasn't about what you have. It's about managing what you want. And what they wanted was just to love and be loved. And they had plenty of time and space to do that. And they did that really, really well. So they were happy, happy people. So managing our wants is, is far more important than trying to always have more. And then that lets us to devote ourselves to things like developing uh, our relationships with each other, growing in love, developing a relationship with God, developing a spiritual life, and serving other people. Because these are really the three things, uh, three, three of the primary things that really make life uh, so worthwhile. is developing an inner life, a spiritual life, a genuine spiritual life. I tell you, not because I'm a priest, but just because I've seen so much of life and because I've read so much that, that, that you know, without a working spiritual life, life is never really going to work. And, uh, and serving others, I mean, again, we know that during the pandemic, it was awfully easy to think that life was all about me, and many people are continuing to live like life is all about them. But that's not a good life. I mean, that, that's, that's, not gonna, that's gonna be the wipeout. Might not be today, might not be tomorrow, but that's gonna be the wipeout. Because the good life, the truly good life, the truly satisfying life, the truly joyful life is the life that's lived in service to others. And of course, there really is no joy, there really is no happiness, there really is no satisfaction in life without great relationships. End of story. Now, so I just want to conclude by saying we saw that in spades. We saw that over and over and over and over again this past week at Vacation Bible School. It was the most joy I have seen and the most joy I have experienced in the last three years. I mean, hands down. But it wasn't just the young people. 
but it's also all the volunteers. You saw that, 75 volunteers, more volunteers than people we had at PBS. And they were filled with, so, we were filled with so much joy. So all the striving that goes on out there, all the accomplishing, all the amassing things and fortune and prestige and all that other stuff, man, I can just tell you, it pales in significance and impact compared to what happened here last week. And so to close, I want to show you just one little last snippet of that, one of my very favorite moments, and that was what happened afterwards. Afterwards, uh, Ben and Amanda and Tom and Heather did a great job of putting together uh, some fun for the teenagers who, who, uh, who, <coughs> who served so well this past week. And they, they, these are some of the best crew leaders I've ever seen. So, I mean, they, they just they did great. In fact, maybe it was because it's been sort of three years without having anything like this, but this was, this, this was, just may have been our best vacation Bible school ever. I mean, it was, it was phenomenal. Uh, and, uh, and, but afterwards, they just, they just were together and sort of cast all their cares and concerns aside, and they did what we wanted our kids to be doing for the last three years, but they couldn't do. And there was so much joy. There was so much soul. There was so much heart. Well, in this.
that, and I hope the start of this service did your heart as much good as it's done mine. To everybody who made that possible, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And now, let's stand and pray together. To the God who gave us such a beautiful week at Vacation Bible School, we pray. Thank you, God, for loving us no matter what. Awesome, God. Forever. Thank you, God, for being with us everywhere. Thank you, God, that even when life changes, you are in charge. Awesome, God. How great is our God. God's power is absolute. Thank God that you are stronger than anything. Awesome, God. For our mind is that nothing can separate us from God's love. Thank you, God, that you are surprising. We give thanks today for those celebrating their birthday this week, especially Lila, Sue, Dawn, Matthew, Katie, Claire, Juliana, Becky, William, Natalie, and all, other who, all others who this week begin another year of their life. We also give thanks to God for those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, especially Danielle and Jeffrey, Anita and David, and Hyen and Randy. Thank you all. So we have a few announcements for youth group this week. Um, but first off, Ben and I just wanted to thank everyone for a great VBS week. 
Father Rob did a great job of saying it in the sermon, but I truly felt all the joy at all the events we held after uh, the week, and it really meant a lot to me. I hope it meant a lot to the kids as well. Um, I had a great time. Hope you guys did too, and we'd love to see you again next year. I heard from some of you that you already planned to do that, but we'd love to see you again. Karaoke and slip and slides should be a repeat, so we want to see everyone there. <laughs> All right, in terms of upcoming events that we'd also love to see you all at, we have two more this summer. A beach bash this Friday, August the 5th, with the same slip and slide coming back. Um, volleyball, yard games, glow sticks, water balloons, and so much more. And then an escape room next Thursday, August the 11th. Um, and we would encourage everyone to find more details and sign up online on the St. Matt's page under the youth tab. Uh, registration will close this Thursday, August, wait, this Thursday, Wednesday, August the 3rd. We have to register Thursday, August the 4th. Uh, we estimate it to be around $30 a person and more information on how to pay will be on the website or in an email going out to the middle school and high school parents later this week. And uh, as always, we encourage all St. Matt's youth to sign up, but if you know any other middle schoolers and high schoolers that would love, like to join us, we'd love to have you. Um, and then also to make the beach bash happen, we really could use a volleyball net or yard games. So if anyone might be able to loan that to us, it would be greatly appreciated. You can come see Ben and I after the service or email office at stmats.org. We really appreciate the slip and slide and tarp from Heidi and um, all of the kiddie pools that were given to us. So we would really appreciate if anyone could donate a or loan a volleyball net and yard games as well. And we really, we thank all of you for your hard work and your participation this summer, especially all the VBS prep that was done by our middle school and high school students at Sunday Not Schools. Um, and we have a few fun Sunday Not Schools coming up for you as a thank you, including the one this Sunday. So we'd love to see you all there after the service. Thank you. Right. Hi, bye. Thanks. <laughs> Good day. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you're cool, you don't have to say anything. I mean, you just... <laughs> I've always aspired to that, but that's why I have to talk so much, because I've just never been cool, so... <laughs> In the Episcopal Church, one of the things that is just super, super, super important to us is that everybody, no matter who you are, no matter where you've come from, what you've done, what you're doing, you know, what you're not doing, that everybody knows that God loves you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And God loves us just absolutely no matter what. And so one of the ways that we express that in the Episcopal Church is at the communion table. And so we don't believe that this is the domain of any particular denomination. We don't believe that at all. We believe that this is the Lord's table. And as such, everybody's welcome here. So we invite all of you in the solidarity that we enjoy both as human beings but also in faith to come to the Lord's table and receive communion. If you want to just receive bread, we ask you to simply extend one hand and we'll just put a piece of bread in your hand. Uh, if you want to have bread dipped in wine, which is a little messy, but a lot of people like that, then we ask you to put one hand on top of another hand. If we see two hands, we'll dip the bread in wine, place that in your hand. And if you're not comfortable receiving bread or wine, but again, you just feel like we're a big family here and you want to be a part of that family, we want you to feel that and be a part of that. So come up and cross your arms across your chest. And we'll ask uh, the power that is behind the universe that is often very different than the God we believe in um, to bless you and to bless you in profound and powerful ways and to draw you in some deep way closer to God's self. So everybody's welcome here. Let's stand and continue. Oh, and if you'd like gluten-free, because we do have gluten-free also, uh, I think what we do is thumbs up. So, or is it what? This? Okay, that's gluten-free, okay? So, thank you, I learned something today, a beautiful thing. And uh, we'll have that for you as well. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right with all the joy that is in our hearts, with all the joy that is in this room, to put that joy into song as we sing. There's no song? Okay. As we continue. They <laughs> just have to come back for another week when we sing at this point. But uh, yeah, okay. So. <laughs> uh, and so we continue. Uh, 
We do thank you, Lord, for the goodness with which you've made this, the, all of creation and the joy that you build into the very foundations of the earth, the very foundations of our being, uh, in the relationships we have with one another. But, Lord, we know that we sometimes live a life that falls short of that joy and that we sometimes think more about ourselves and the things that we want and think we need to have than we do about other people. And so we know our lives aren't always filled with joy or a sense of well-being. And so you send prophets and sages, wise women, wise men, to speak to us of the way back to that joy, the way back to you, the way back to life as you intended it. And when we didn't always listen to prophets or sages or wise women or wise men, you sent your son Jesus to show us in no uncertain time, terms what the good life really looks like. And not just to speak about it, but to show us in flesh and blood how it's actually lived. Remember how Jesus did that by loving all kinds of people that people didn't think should be loved, by welcoming people into religious communities that people didn't think belonged in religious communities, by responding in ways very differently than people thought people would respond. Remember how Jesus did that in the night in which he was betrayed. When he was betrayed, we would have expected a response of anger, maybe a response of hatred, maybe a response of violence, but instead Jesus responds in love, taking bread, breaking bread, giving it to his disciples and saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he also took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of, my, uh, of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so, Father, we do pray you'd send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they'd be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, that in receiving them we would receive his presence anew into our lives, and be reminded where the joy that you've created us to know is truly to be found. In loving you, loving one another, and then when we've done those two things, to simply do as we please. And we do ask this all for your love's precious sake. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us stand and pray. Most good and gracious God, we do celebrate your greatness. We are grateful for the way you make that greatness known by sharing your presence with us in the bread and wine of communion. Thank you for all the people who shared your greatness with us last week, crew leaders, and many, many other volunteers, the band who played such great music, people who cooked and served our meals, for Corinne, our fearless leader, and for all parents, grandparents, babysitters, au pairs, and neighbors who brought us to VBS this week and to church today. Help us now to share your greatness with other people too. In the name of our great God, we pray. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and always. always. to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.